Hello and welcome to this week's Whiteboard Wednesday. My name is Chris Kirsch. I'm the Product Marketing Manager for Metasploit here at Rapid7. So if you're working in security, chances are that you're spending the majority of your time on defensive security techniques. And maybe you're already using some offensive security techniques to test if these uh, defenses are working as expected. Now, traditionally, offensive security techniques have been used to step into the shoes of an attacker, and uh, usually they're, they're used as part of a penetration test. Now, one issue with penetration tests is while it's very broad and gives you like a, a very holistic picture of a simulated attack, it's not very repeatable. And you might not get the same result when you repeat the same pen test, maybe with a different uh, pen tester, for example. So how do you solve that problem? There is a new methodology called security controls testing that we've seen emerge in uh, different organizations. And uh, a lot of customers are telling us that they're doing, you know, maybe not very comprehensively all of them, but uh, bits and pieces of these um, to get very laser-focused results on one particular security control. So um, the uh, security controls testing can be used either when you put a new defensive security control in place to test that it's working correctly, or some people do it on an ongoing basis. They might do it you know, every quarter or so to audit their security controls and see if anything has changed. Let me give you some examples of what this means. So for example, IDSs uh, are meant to detect attacks coming from the outside. So uh, people have been using Metasploit to uh, simulate an attack from the outside to see if their IDS is triggering. Also with DLP, DLP is meant to uh, find sensitive information that's being uh, sent outside of the organization. So I've heard of uh, companies that actually take security, social security numbers or credit card numbers and so on, of course kind of fake ones, but that still um, look like a, a real number. And they've been sending those out of the organization to see if their DLP triggers it, you know, by email, by uh, HTTP upload and so on. Then password auditing is another interesting aspect of security controls testing, where you can brute force your passwords to check, you know, are people using the right complexity and so on um, for Windows passwords, but also beyond Windows. And then firewall egress testing uh, is uh, very interesting. A lot of companies are looking at whether, uh, you know, what ports are open coming into the organization, but firewall egress testing is actually checking what ports are open going out because there are some very good reasons for uh, blocking certain ports uh, to, to stop some kind of attacks or uh, exfiltration, et cetera, et cetera, some malware as well. Uh, so the new Metasploit meta module for firewall egress testing, for example, is a really quick and easy way to, uh, to do the firewall egress testing. And then lastly, phishing. I would also see this as a security controls test because you're testing two different security controls. First of all, the technical controls that you have in place. These could be a number of different things that are stopping people from uh, receiving a malicious email or, uh, or actually reaching the website connected to a, a link in an email that may be malicious, um, or also maybe executing some um, malicious code on the, on the client, for example. But you're also testing the user security awareness. Uh, and that shouldn't be overlooked as well. If you're putting in uh, effort and, and resources to train your users, then you should also test uh, whether they're susceptible to phishing attacks and actually measure that and build a trend over time. All right, that's it for today, and I'll hope to see you next Wednesday.